Yeah, of course it is, my friend. God made me perfect in his own image. This is perfectionism. You know something, in the end, there's a simple answer around anything to do with Jesus. And that is actually the act of love. But love in the Bible means to give up your life for others. It means that in the end you're not concerned not about what happens to you. In Love is the simple woman. truth. For it says here, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender plant, like a tender shoot, like a root in the dry ground. There was nothing beautiful about him. Never nothing you would never want to look at. Fungi. All of the it was ugly that you could planet. see. This never or anything that was majestic That's about his appearance. Huh. Nothing that anyone Jesus would actually would attract us to us. He was despised and rejected like this man says today. Rejecting him all day long. He was a man of sorrows. He knew what it was to be in pain. He knew what it was know? to have injustice played upon know? him. He knew what it was to be hated. He knew what it was to simply lay his hand on someone else that others condemned and to raise them up for life and for love and to heal them when others condemned them. He said, I will lay my hand upon you and I will raise you up and give you your sight. That's the kind of man this was. And yet in the end, they hated him for it. They stood against him. They spoke against him. They actually took scourges and actually scourged his back. And then if it wasn't enough, they took him upon the cross. And they took him upon the cross. And why did they do that? They did that so we could see what wicked evilness looked like. So we could see what injustice looked like. So that we could see what hatred looked like. So that we could see that everything that was unloving, unjust, unequal, hateful, sinful, wretched, wicked, evil, was actually upon that cross. And why did he do that? Because God himself came and said, you are not righteous, not one of you, not one of you is righteous. But he said, because I love you, I come and show you how much I am prepared to give up my life for you. The reality is, my friend, is this God has the power to lift up his life again. He is not a man like you. He is not a man like my friend here. He's not a man He's like this man here. He is a man, man. That, he is a one that can bring up the power of life. He's won his life. He's won his life. And he went on the cross and he said, forgive them. Forget everything they've ever done. But they know not what they do. The reality of this God is a God of life, a God of love, and a God of eternal life. And in the end he said that I will show you, I will come and show you myself how to love me, and that I love you. So I thank you Lord Jesus for the fact that you gave up your life. You didn't kind of stand upon some kind of stone. You didn't actually stand there like some kind of president. You weren't the chief of some great mighty Nazi? tribe on earth. Amen. You were a carpenter's son. Amen. And you went on the cross to show what it is. Okay, what it is to show how we should sin. love. Hallelujah. That's who this God is. Okay. That's who Jesus is. Okay, the name that read. simply says, I say the Amen. 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 Oh, and say it. Amen. 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 That's where God displays His amazing love, His infinite love, by giving His infinite Son to be subject unto death, to pay the penalty for sin, and then raise Him up again from the dead. And Jesus Christ was willing to taste death what an for every life. man so and then on the third day to rise again from the dead he was willing to endure a cross and that's where we see what God thinks of sin that it should take him so that he humiliated death 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God thinks of sin. And that's where the love of God is displayed towards sinners that Jesus Christ should give up his own life for us all and then take it up again. That he should have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. And this commandment he received from the Father. Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. He has conquered death. If he had never tasted death, he would never have conquered death. But he tasted death for every man so that he might go through the experience of death on the cross. Another one now. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, had nailed up historical evidence of this. In the Hebrew, in the Latin, and in the Greek languages, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Nobody else took his place. It was Jesus of Nazareth in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. Nobody else went to the cross in his place. It was Jesus of Nazareth that died on the cross. It was Jesus of Nazareth that was laid in the tomb. It was Jesus of Nazareth that rose from the dead. It was Jesus of Nazareth that ate and drank with his disciples after his resurrection. God doesn't need to eat or drink. It is Jesus. God does. God requires death for sin. And the only way that your penalty and my penalty could be paid was by the death of Jesus Christ. That's not justice. And victorious over death. So he clothed himself with our humanity that he might put away sin by the substitutionary death that he suffered in our place. And then he rose up from the dead, triumphant, triumphant over death, triumphant over all principality and power. Jesus Christ has risen to the highest height Amen. that heaven affords. He now fills all things and he comes to dwell in his holy church, the assembly of believers who love him and who are forgiven their sin through the shedding of his blood. But God doesn't have a son. You get your facts. No, that's God on the